uh, text and let us know your name, your organization, and your location. Yeah, someone just said from Santa Teresa College, Bawan, Batangas. All right, welcome. And from Vibal Group. Right. And Fabi, welcome. very interesting today because I think we have uh, companies like, uh, did you hear like Travel Recommends is giving out something. There's going to be like 50 freebies that will be given out to uh, very active uh, participants in this webinar this afternoon. Yeah, we will uh, look forward to all those prizes because we have 50. Wow, I can't wait. Can we also be part of that 50 <laughs> prizes? Yeah. Drawn, so let's see who gets the freebies from Travel Recommends. Parang, you know, you, you, we're all used to a conference and there's raffle prizes given out uh, for any participant or actively who are actively engaged. Parang it's a way to do it, but this time it's via email. Yeah, oh, I want to say Gail Magalang from Batanga City. Welcome. And then from San Pedro Relocation Center National High School, Landayan Annex. All right, we have also watching. From San Pedro College of Business Administration. Welcome to the, to the webinar, Rex. And then we also have Reggie Santos from In Incipiro. Yeah. In Spiro. In Spiro, yeah. Inspiro. And Department of Justice, Office of Cybercrime Manila. Welcome. <laughs> Cybercrime, right? I mean, welcome, uh, Ranji, Ranji, right? Ranji. And we have uh, uh, hi, Jerry. Uh, so, uh, hi, Gilbert and Fabi. Looking forward to the session. Hello, welcome, Jerry. We have Lloyd uh, Volfango of Real Page Philippines. And we also have John Paul uh, Mangulabnan from Taguig City. Welcome. Some more uh, we have now. It's uh, so the numbers are building up. Ninety nine. One more, and we're hundred. And um, yeah, there you go. We have a uh, hundred participants now. And uh, we're, we still have enough time. Uh, it's 2.59. And we'll give you know, a, a few minutes more allowance for those trying to connect. Uh, we, you know, this time, also, Fabi, technology is a challenge. Your Wi-Fi, right? If there's yeah, one I'm, thing, I'm using a prepaid Wi-Fi, so <laughs> it's right. challenging, really. But it, I right. survived with it for the last five weeks. I want to say hello to people who have been chatting in the our chat room. Uh, mm -hmm. Jonathan Lysak from Real Page Philippines. We also have people from Tanza Cavite, uh, Ruby Bobier. Uh, and then also, uh, hi guys. Well, I feel like I'm in a game show with the raffles. Yeah. <laughs> We're giving away 50 uh, raffle prizes from Travel Recommends. Sure. Um, I hope these are trips. So that after the lifting, we are able to travel, right? These are trips or hotels. Uh, there are fifty freebies that they're going. They're, that they're it's up for grab, and uh, they'll all. Um, I think travel recommends communicated that they'll give fifteen percent. We shall be giving you the code for your discount. Should you avail of any of their products, um, we'll be happy to give you the code uh, post this uh, webinar. Let's continue and, 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 people. So we have people, we have Joy of Velocity Solutions Inc. And uh, Piper uh, Ragusante from Infocom Technologies. And also from Tanawan City. Yeah. So let's watch the video for, uh, you know, we'd like to thank XOXO Day for making this possible to accommodate hundreds of uh, uh, participants in this up, uh, in this afternoon's webinar. Um, Priya, you may go ahead and play the video. Volume Priya.
Can you hear me, Gilbert? I can hear you, but there's no volume in your video. Okay, one second. Uh... There you go. Okay, um, partner, looks like very, uh, again, interesting afternoon. We have a total of 153 uh, participants right now. And in a few minutes, we shall be starting the session. Before that, why don't we have a quick survey and small talk, Abby? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so we have a quick survey and small talk and uh, I'd like everybody to participate here uh, to look at, you know, um, to know more about the situation and it's good. Uh, the way you participate is just answer on your Zoom chat box so that we'll be able to see, you know, and uh, hear from you as well. So this is part of our engaging, you know, participants in this afternoon session. This is before we start formally the program. So first question is, how is your company operating amid COVID-19 crisis? And you have four choices. Okay, so we'll give time for people to answer and uh, do exchange of communication there. Fabi, what about you? What, what happened? How is your company operating amid this crisis? Oh, it's uh, quite challenging, but we have acclimatized with the situation. Uh, we even brought uh, desktops to our finance teams to make sure that they're able to print our checks for payment. So they had to bring home their printers, all that kind of things. And we're also still dealing with a lot of our clients uh, because I work for an ad agency and, and you know, customer experience still has to be um, superb even in this kind of situation. So we're also taking care of our clients. And I think, you know, Gilbert, now is the time to be with our clients, mm. even though with this kind of uh, limitations that we have right now, it's essential that we are in touch with the accounts we're managing, the clients that we're handling, and not only internal customers, but external customers. Sure. And, um, you know, th there has been confusion first. One is, Will they be working from home or will company shut down, right? So are we seeing uh, some of the chat box uh, in the chat box? 
are you seeing? What are generally the answers? Is it working from home? Is it BNC? Is it really no work from home? Uh, sorry, no work and operations shut down. So some says B, letter B, which is remote management or work from home, B and C. Uh, and then some answers are letter D also. Okay. Uh, a lot, uh, well, I, there's also letter A here. Sure. So may mga no work. I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's move on to the next. How are you currently communicating with your employees? So how are you engaging? How are you communicating with them? And you have these choices. Ang hirap, no? With this technology limited. And we all, I think I remember that was Thursday. They made announcement. And then following Monday, we were forced to uh, comply with the enhanced community quarantine, correct? Is that that's what yeah, happened? Yeah, that's correct. It was like Friday. And then by the following Monday, it was you know, generally the directive that we had to follow. So most of the answers were all of the above. People are using mobile phone. People are using virtual meeting platform. We have different platforms like what we're currently using right now, which is Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, then we also have Teams. I'm sure you guys are using Teams. I use that a lot. Email communication. Of course, my emails are overpowering uh, every single day, you know. And of course, we've said that all of the above use all this kind of um communication tools and they they come in handy <laughs> all right let's go to the next uh, question fabi you wanna you wanna read it yeah how frequent do you hold employee engagement activities oh this is very important no this is very so important. is it a zero b one to two weeks three to five times a week for letter c and then d daily all right so the answer is that must be hard for HR. I mean, you know. Oh, so, yeah. Being in yeah. HR, you need to keep people happy. But that's a mandate also. We'd like to hear later from the speakers. Is that uh, from a CEO or COO perspective or even the CHRO's perspective, is it to keep employees engaged this time? Especially that it's all virtual management. It's all like, I don't know where they are. I don't see them. Not physically with you guys. But how, how frequent do we hold? I hope. You know, at least one, no? I'm I'm not sure, though, if the challenge is if there's no technology at all, ang hirap nung zero. Oh, meron ng salita ng zero dito, but they, I think the company makes up for their incentives. So okay. I think that's also another good thing that the engagement is through their incentives, mostly through information sharing. Some people say letter B, one to twice a week, one to two times a week, three to five times a week. The others are daily. My company, we do it daily too. Okay. Let's move on to the next. So how do you measure result of your employee engagement activity? It's hard, right? Um, either you do survey or you ask feedback during the meeting. Hopefully, you're doing one. Or there's really no measure to, to do that. Parang for us, every time we talk, that's okay. That's good enough. Okay, some people are saying they do not have to measure it. Asking feedback during meeting, that's good. Wow, some people say they have feedback analytics. Wow. You have that kind of sophisticated technology to do it. That's pretty good. Uh, some says letter A, okay. Mm -hmm. Asking feedback during meeting. Mostly have uh, nightly surveys. Good to know. And by the way, we... Uh... We also sent a link for a uh, for survey that we want to share with everybody the results. So if you haven't really participated in that survey we sent you out, we sent out, please do so. So we'll, we'll be able to finish that. We were intending actually, Fabi, to share the results today. However, uh, there was an error in the link that we sent as of last night. So I don't think we'd be able to share that. Thus, we have this free wall to ask questions on our survey. Okay, uh, that's why. All right. Yes, Next yes, survey, yes. let me read it. How do you measure result employee engagement activity? A, asking feedback during meetings. B, employee survey. Letter C, both A and B. And letter D, we do not have a measure to measure result. Others, please specify for letter E. How do you measure 
result on employment and employment engagement activity. Hmm. Okay, so people have been answering same A. We also have people saying letter B and letter C. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh. a lot of letter C actually. Next question, Fabi. Yeah, I think we need to move a little. Uh, we need to move. We have the three minutes and we should start the program. Go ahead. Okay, what is the most challenging part of your employee engagement? Letter A, no virtual management platform for employee engagement. Letter B, HR is not capable of remote in employee engagement. Letter C, needs approval to run employee engagement activities. Letter D, collaboration and communication with employees. E, it's not a priority. I hope not. F is others. Yeah, it's hard, no? Especially for centers that have a big population of workforce. Yeah, thousands. For like 10,000 people. Uh, need for collaboration and that communication platform that they all need to be in. No, I don't know what's, yeah. what's going on. Uh, what's the answer mostly? Okay, letter D, uh, collaboration, communication with employees. Oh, there's no letter H. <laughs> letter D again. It's really letter D and letter B. HR is not capable, oh my God, of remote employee engagement. And maybe so this, not, uh, maybe the technology. And so, webinar, and so this webinar should be able to help people who yes. are who are still lost, you know, but there's only a week or two now before we're back to the new normal. So we'll hear from our speakers later. And we're so privileged to have again four of them come into, uh, you know, into, into this webinar and speak before our audience, which is uh, still building up in terms of numbers. So this is very crucial question. Is your company going to operate as business as usual after COVID-19 crisis, A, yes, B, no, and C, uncertain. Ang hirap, no? There are news that, you know, companies will operate in a different manner now. Like, oh, I have, yeah. I just had a meeting this morning about that. My company would choose to do a skeletal force or a scheduling of group A, group B. Yes, it's business as usual for others, and B, you have also B, no, and some people are still uncertain. So it's mixed answers. Adolis says 30% of their people should at least go back to work, at least. Go ahead, Fabi, okay. with the, with the so last. The last one, is your company ready to adapt the new normal? A, yes, B, no, and C, uncertain, open to explore because of the situation. Okay. So with that, um, we'd like to again thank you uh, for those who participated in our quick survey. Uh, happy that you can all join today. Um, this is a webinar brought to you by HRTX in partnership with Solarium, uh, with XOXO Day, with Omwelt AI, uh, in, uh, with support. Uh, of course, uh, Travel Recommends is going to give us freebies. Uh, we are also, uh, we, we have received support uh, of endorsement for this uh, webinar this afternoon from um, the IT, uh, IT Business Process Association of the Philippines, the Contact Center Association of the Philippines. And, uh, you know, again, this is brought to you by XOXO Day. Thank you for the technology uh, uh, for the Zoom that we're using right now. So, um, why don't we start uh, the program, partner? Yeah, I'd like to introduce our first speaker. We'll be having four speakers this afternoon. And I'm privileged to introduce our four, first speaker, who's the Senior Vice President of SPI Technologies. Let's welcome Mr. Niki Akkawin. Thank you. Thank you, Fabi. I hope uh, you guys can uh, hear me clearly. Um, we do. Let me turn on the video. Para naman, it's always good. No, there's no human interaction nga, and then we're not able to see each other. Pa. Um, but very humbled and honored to be here today. Um, again, thank you to XOXO, um, IBPAP, CCAP um, for, for inviting us and, and giving us this platform to be able to share um, our experience and, of course, learnings for the past five weeks. No? Um, uh, I think just based on the overall theme, I, I've been very fortunate to have been part of IBPAP uh, pre-COVID and, and moved to SPI mid-COVID. So I've, I've seen 
uh, the struggles, the challenges of the association, as well as how agile and quickly we were able to adapt. Um, uh, just the other day, uh, we, were, we had the same webinar for employees across Vietnam, Philippines, uh, China, and, and as well as India. And, and I couldn't help but think, and there's this one line that, that I, I shared with the team to kick off our discussions, that there is truly nothing like a crisis to um, clarify the mind, that in suddenly uh, volatile and different times, we all must have a strategy. Um, so today, um, you know, we hope to be able to impart um, uh, key learnings and share best practices, taking away even just one uh, learning from this session, of course, will make it all worth it. Um, I know everyone in, in, in this uh, forum will agree with me that we all have different uh, approaches uh, to keeping our employees connected and engaged. Um, I, I see a lot of the answers in the chat line, um, implementing. Um, uh, you know, weekly meetings, daily touch bases, calling employees out. So all of that's great. Um, so what I've seen just the uh, the past three and a half weeks of, of being with uh, rejoining SBI Global um, is that one, one of the most effective ways was implementing a weekly AMA or uh, even a daily. It really depends. Um, it depends on the issues, depends on um, what uh, problems or challenges need to be addressed. But an AMA essentially is ask me anything. Um, typically what, what really worked, um, at least from my experience, is it also helps at times uh, to, to not keep a formal agenda, but really keep it flow, free flowing and uh, really interactive. Um, getting to touch base with our team members, with our, what we call the frontliners who are both um, accommodate in different boarding houses and hotels, as well as uh, the staff who are part of the skeletal workforce um, really is, is crucial for us. Um, you know, after more, of more than a month, you know, some of them being uh, far away from their families, it's very important to, uh, you know, do quick checkpoints or touch points as to how their morale is going. Um, I, I think everyone will, again, agree with me that the these are very interesting times. Um, I, I do hope everyone in this forum, you know, your families are safe and yourselves. Uh, but we have to think that while we're fortunate uh, to, to, to be in this situation, um, it never is easy uh, to be away from the families and not to be away from the families and not have enough um, human interaction. Ang, ang mga Pinoy pa naman, no? Tayong mga Pilipino sanay na sanay sa uh, beso beso or yung hugs. So I, I think this is a, a huge shift, you know, and what, what we call, uh, Fabian uh, Gilbert mentioned it earlier, the new normal. Um, if, there, if you guys are asking what, what, what platforms can be used, uh, of course, there's Zoom, there's their Teams, no? Um, there's Slido, it's an audience engagement app. Um, which lets team members submit and upvote topics for discussion. Um, I'll keep my, the, the three items I wanted to, to share, just three points. You know, second piece is just the health and wellness benefits. You know, a lot of us have, have been talking about um, monetary benefits, the different um, programs being offered by different government agencies. Um, but instead of cash incentives, what we're not realizing is, um, you know, the impact to mental health. You know? um, so all these uh, gift certificates or reimbursements, uh, we, we sort of are thinking of flipping that and putting a twist to it. You know? um, for things like meditation, um, reading, there are a lot of apps out there. Um, I use uh, Headspace, for example. Um, language lessons that we can reimburse our employees for um, might not be for all. Um, so we need to be able to customize and tailor fit that. Um, the other piece, uh, at least specific to SBI Global, um, which we're very proud of, is um, the continuous holding of R&R programs, even if it's uh, online. And I'm very sure a lot of us here are doing it as well. Um, and, and handing out points to be able to purchase instead of jackets, tumblers, uh, you know, things like the bare essentials really for their families and their friends. So even if they're uh, situated in a hotel or are in a uh, skeletal workforce setup on site, 
they're still able to purchase the bare essentials for the families, such as groceries and all of that. Um, uh, on meditation, just very quickly, uh, I mentioned the app, but there are team-wide guided meditation sessions that we can also hold virtually. Um, I've seen it work for some regions. Um, might not be, uh, you know, the cup thief, at least for us mga Pilipino, but I uh, highly recommend no? uh, that we try it out. Um, uh, the one, the, the other piece is uh, when we, again, going back to the session that we were holding uh, a couple of days ago with our employees was, you know, differentiating how now we're investing our time, um, given the, uh, what the millennials or uh, people call the dead time. So it's, the question was posed. I had to ask the team, you know, the dead time versus a live time. I think uh, more more than anything, it's it's very important for us to encourage employees after their shift or after their working hours to to be investing on themselves. Uh, I always have kept this one rule since I started in the industry 21 years ago to always learn something new um, every day. Uh, you know, always end your day uh, having learned something new. And there. Are, quite a number of free courses. Uh, for example, Harvard Business Review, uh, they've been offering 67 free courses online. Um, we'll make sure that the link is um, shared to everybody uh, in this conference, um, as well as uh, if you've been accessing the IBPAP website, or uh, Fabi mentioned it earlier, the IT and Business Process Association of the Philippines uh, have partnered with Cloud Swift. And uh, if you sign up and log in, uh, we'll also share with you the link. There are uh, RPA uh, data analytics, IT ops server courses uh, that you can take online on, on your own, uh, on your most convenient time, um, and can issue a certificate for free. Um, again, it, it's very important for us to be really leveraging and capitalizing on the a lifetime that we have instead of calling it dead time. Um, last item that I did want to share as far as, uh, you know, keeping uh, employees con constantly and continuously engaged uh, with this new normal that we're at is I mentioned mental health earlier. Um, you know, I think counseling services is often forgotten, uh, just making sure that we constantly have that conversation. But uh, I always say that mental health and morale of employees must, must never take a back seat. Um, so a lot of HR professionals here, uh, Fabi, I know, is uh, HR head for, for her company. So it's always important to keep that in mind. Um, Post-crisis, uh, you know, I, as we plan for the new normal, uh, today we should be hearing from the IATF um, how long the extension will be. But, uh, you know, not having to wait for that, it's good to set up a plan ahead team. Um, the whole reintegration process of uh, resuming people or getting people to go back to the office is not going to be an easy feat. Um, all the logistics, um, reporting mechanisms have got to be in place. Um, what kind of equipment or PPEs are going to be provided, uh, disinfecting the sites, um, you know, doing tests as needed. Uh, while not mandated, I think uh, will be critical to ensure a smooth reintegration of resumption of work in the office. Um, you know, I, I know that's a lot said. Um, uh, the one question I, I did pose uh, to our teams at least, uh, uh, both within IBPAP and uh, uh, SBI Global is, you know, we're all going to remember this time um, where it's unfortunate that our generation had to go through this, but uh, you know, we're all going to have sharp memories of this time. And, and the question that we should constantly be asking ourselves is, um, will we be proud of how we used uh, the time? So that said, I'll, I'll end there and uh, turn the floor back over to uh, Fabi and Gilbert. Thank you again, everyone. Stay safe and healthy. Okay, thank you very much, Nikki. And uh, let's give Nikki again uh, a virtual round of applause. Guys, you have in your button, if you want to react, there's uh, clapping and there's a raise of hand. And uh, that was really very, uh, you know, um, enlightening and, you know, very inspiring to know that there are technologies out there. Nikki, there's a question. Uh, yeah. Which 
platform do you use to still engage colleagues, even uh, work from home other than Zoom? I think Zoom became so popular these days. But yeah, other yeah. And technology, not to promote Zoom, but you know, we're using it now. But uh, there was a question: is, is there are there other platforms that you recommend? You know that uh, industry is using, or you yeah. recommend? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was, uh, you know, Fabi mentioned Teams. I, I, I actually am testing Slido, S L I D O. I think the the one advantage there is that there's it's it's an audience engagement app. Um, so there, you, you know, it lets Teams or enables Teams to submit ideas, upvote topics real time. Um, not very different from uh, Zoom and Teams, but that, that's one recommendation. What we'll do is we'll also post it, uh, the, the app that uh, I just mentioned. There are a lot of uh, apps and uh, technologies out there that, that we all can use. And, and for those of you who are interested to know more about some technologies that the industry is using, uh, Indu is also in, in this session. Hello, Indu. Um, she shared the website and the link. Please go ahead and click. And, uh, Thank you, Indu. I be pop. Indu is, uh, Indu is is also here in the in the webinar. So, um, yep. So let's move on. I mean, there are other questions, but in the interest of time, let's move on to uh, the next speaker. Uh, very passionate about having to marry both operations and people strategy. Uh, she's a trustee and a board direct a board of director member of the board of directors of the Contact Center Association of the Philippines. Um, I know her always, Fabi, as uh, Supra Nanay. Please welcome our second speaker, Tonichi Achura Parek. Hello, good afternoon. Um, real quickly, I sent my file, my presentation to Priya. I'm not sure if she's able to flash it. Um, it just... Uh... You want me to play the video? Oh, it's a, no, it's a PowerPoint presentation. Once again, let me check. Let me go ahead and try to share my screen. Too. Yes, yes, I have the presentation. Okay. So really quickly before, while we're waiting for the presentation, I just want to walk everyone through um, what we, I will be talking about. It just um, puts uh, working from home into different contexts, right? So right now we're going through, um, Priya, can you go to the first slide, please? Um, we're going through the... This one? Uh, yes, that's right. So working from home right now, we, we know it from... Um, working from home during the COVID lockdown, and then eventually we will push for working from home as the new normal. Um, that's something that everyone is talking about, but um, for the purposes of discussion, let's put what is normal into context. So working at home during this time is abnormal, right? So I think everyone will agree with that. Um, our schedules are different. We have to take into consideration the schedules of everyone in our household. We have kids at home home um, it's unlikely unlike when we are at work and we are just working and we have our peers around us in this scenario we have kids we have um, other members of the family who may be resting or sleeping or also working so um, in a space uh, where we it is shared we need to take all of those things into consideration the other thing is people right now are unable to move freely so we cannot simply send parcel around any time when we want to, or um, if our equipment fails us, we don't have our IT team to come to our station to fix it. And now in-person checkups for maintenance may not be possible or it will take some time. And even our love for the paper trail can be a challenge. Now working from home in, as a new normal um, will be maybe different or um, I'm not sure if that's in a good way or a bad way, but the infra infrastructure around enabling working from home will highly, will, is highly engaged right now. So um, the industries and the different um, business entities and our environment is pushing and making sure that the business sectors are very well supported. Um, the other thing is policies, guidelines, and procedures are now being formulated. Um, so, and it's being drafted. So with this work, 
from home setup, a lot of those things will be changing. Now, what was used to be, and I think everyone um, here on the call would agree, what, what used to be frowned upon by many, because we, really, we were really pushing for work from home, especially when we were experiencing impossible traffic and long hours of commute. Now, every, everyone is trying to accomplish it, to, to get it done. Um, for example, even attendance policies are changing because of this. Believe it or not, um, even while working from home, we are experiencing some absenteeism problem. Um, but um, going back, it's the main pushback for implementing work from home in the past, um, primarily technology capability and data privacy and security, and third, equipment and control. But working from home isn't really new, right? It has always been there, but um, it, wasn't, it just wasn't the norm, at least not for us. Um, I think we're still a long way from calling it the new normal, um, but I think we are now better informed so that um, we can, we know, now we know what we can and cannot do. So until we are confident and secure um, with the imperfections of this setup, we cannot, I don't think we can merely call it the new normal for us yet. Um, now, if you go to the next slide, um, Priya, I just enumerated a few things, um, few benefits of working from home and most of you would understand that. So it's, you know, um, your office can be any kind and anywhere. Um, you can go to the, um, right now you can't, but eventually you can go to the coffee shop, in the home, you can be anywhere. Um, it's convenient, it's cost efficient and practical. Um, ideally, you should be able to spend time, more time with your family and it eliminates commute and you know, it, pr it promotes better, ideally again, it promotes better work-life balance and it's a less stressful environment. But um, don't be fooled because working from home is really not for everyone. So it's, it, it's something that you know, everyone needs to understand too. Um, Priya, can you go to the next slide? Because there are certainly challenges from working from home for, and I've enumerated some of those here. Um, I'm not sure if you guys would like to go through that, but just real quickly, I, I enumerated it and classified it into more, some are personal and behavioral, and um, upon the discipline of each individual. Other challenges are based from tools, environment, technology. Actually, some people prefer to work in the office because you know, the connection is more stable, it's, you're able to focus more. Um, just because the environment probably they're living in is not conducive for um, you know, working from home. And then there's um, social connection. So um, for social connection, though, I would go into the last of the three C's. It's the camaraderie and I think Nikki um, quickly touched upon that collaboration and communication because um, not being able to actually see each other, talk to each other, touch each other sometimes um, makes, a, makes a world of difference. So um, just to share with you, I've got um, clients in the past, you know, we would have um, clients who are not Philippine based um, and when we go on video con, um, to them, it, it, um, corporate, their corporate culture is that to them, it is rude to not be on video con if it is a video con. So if I can see all your names here, to them, that's rude. And maybe eventually when, you know, when uh, we are full on working from home, that could eventually be the behavior, right? So um, if you go to the next slide, um, Priya. Just a few tips and suggestions. Um, actually, some of it came off of, um, you know, the things, the best practices that we have been hearing from our HR practitioners. Like Nikki, I've been very involved during the early um, days of the lockdown um, with the Contact Center Association of the Philippines. Um, it was beautiful to see that all the HR practitioners, you know, got together, um, sharing best practices. We, we were completely forgot about uh, um, being competitive with each other. It was really a time to get together and, you know, make sure that the industry shines through at this time. So, for example, a few things that maybe uh, Mickey and Alpha will probably talk about, you know, um, 
schedules, um, discuss schedules that you can commit to, be punctual. Um, it's, it's important while we are working from home, it's important that we keep a schedule as well because um, you know, we need to be able to respect other people's times and set clear expectations. Now, um, when we eventually move to the new normal, um, I think it's critical that as employers or as business leaders or leaders, or leaders um, it's important that we keep into mind we keep in mind that um, when we are deploying equipment, um, we have to invest on equipment that is easy to use, hardware and software that's easy to use because you know we won't always have our IT um, teams ready to help us right there and then. Um, we need to eventually equip our employees with basic troubleshooting skills. And of course, um, eventually when we're out of this lockdown, um, we need to be able to set up a very reliable help desk um, for them. So um, a few things on engagement. Um, I've seen so many different kinds of um, engagement practices over um, the course of the past weeks in Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Um, it's, it's interesting how everyone has been really, really creative. But some of the things that I thought, you know, stood out for me was um, first this, um, you know, some companies actually engaged um, a third party provider in virtual counseling sessions. And Nikki mentioned that earlier. Um, so I thought that was, I, I, when I was listening to some of that, I thought that was really cool. Um, just because while some of us must be enjoying, you know, working from home, it can be isolating. So, um, and it's not just isolation that we're, you know, you, we, we should be worried about. It's um, a lot of other things that has to do with connection. So virtual counseling sessions and some companies even do virtual medical checkups. So that, I thought, um, that stood out among some of the best practices um, that I have heard that was going around um, the industry. Um, I think for the most part, it's really technology, technology, technology. So um, make use of technology as much as you can. But um, at the same time, I think, um, let's, I think, so I, I was, I liked the question earlier from Gilbert about, you know, how often, do you guys engage your team? How often do you hold engagement sessions? Um, and there's daily and free, so daily, um, weekly, and all that. I think it's important to understand what you're engaging them with, right? Because um, don't fall into the trap of just doing an activity as a tick box. Because even our employees feel that. It does. It's no longer productive for them. In fact, it becomes demotivating when we overdo it a little bit. Um, okay, Priya, can you go to the next? So moving to when we eventually transition to the new normal, um, a few things that we should really watch out for and what we should do as we transition is to you know, identify which roles can actually re work remotely in percentages. Because I don't think um, in the long run, not all, um, not all jobs or not all types of work can be done remotely. Um, obviously, we need to review the employee code of ethics because, you know, like I mentioned, even attendance policies, um, leave policies, that will all change. Um, and determine communication practices. For some people, um, you know, everyday touch base is great. But for other employees, that's really not what works. So it, it also needs to be customized to some degree. Um, the last thing I would say is um, evaluate your benefits, insurance, and liability, and define security measures. Um, one of the things that um, was, I thought was interesting, you know, we used to do price allowances, um, phone allowances. Now we also do, we need to do internet allowances or if we don't have, if they don't have internet allowance, then we need to provide them with a pocket Wi-Fi. So those are some of the things that will change over time. Um, yeah, so I think that's, that's basically it. Um, for overall, I think that the, for me, um, the takeaway is really 
at this point, it was um, beautiful. Like I said, beautiful to see that um, a lot of um, the folks within the industry, um, not just the CEOs, not just the HR practitioners, all of us really came together to make sure that, you know, we were trying to do what's best for our employees. And I think at this time, that's what really matters. So that's it for me. All right. Thank you, Tonichi, for such insightful um, presentation this afternoon. I learned a lot myself being in HR practice. I think you, we just have to have... Uh, sorry, I'm on a new... Sorry? Have you, do you practice? I mean, what, what she uh, shared? Yeah, we, and uh, the challenges that she mentioned and my own challenges being in HR. I, uh, I go through that even when it comes to policy making and that's something that I am currently doing right now to ensure that the policy is now relevant to the times. And uh, there was a question about what, when you say engagement, is this different from working? When you say engagement, Tonichi, when we, because we've been using the word engagement, uh, is it enough that people are given work and we have meetings regarding work? Is that enough engagement that we're talking about? Oh, no, definitely not. Because that's, that's when I say, you know, you, uh, managers should not fall into the trap of just making engagement a tick box, right? Because even employees across, the, across town or cities will understand that, will know that. That's why it's important to have really a personal connection. Um, sometimes it doesn't even have to be your connection or your touch base doesn't even have to be about work, right? So it's, it's not so much, okay, we need to have a meeting today or we need to have games because that, that can become you know, meaningless to employees if it doesn't make sense for them. Sometimes it's important to just ask during your team meeting or your daily catch up, okay, so what's your high for the day? Mm -hmm. So, right? So it's not so much, okay, how many did you do today? It's sometimes it, it becomes more meaningful when the questions are about the family. Okay, so that's right. Right? So what's your high for the day? What did you learn about your family member that you would not have learned if um, you were at work? Yeah, I actually do that no? when, whenever I meet my team. It's not just about work all the time. So I would start off by saying like, okay, uh, share in one word how you're feeling right now or share um, what are you thankful for. You know, those kinds of questions is more personal. And I think, you know, as Filipinos, we love having rela build, building our relationships despite, you know, our current uh, situation nowadays. And building relationships with our employees is essentially important so they could also be motivated and influence their motivation to work. Okay, do we have other questions, Gilbert? Or uh, are we ready or, to proceed? Or, or just recommendations of uh, even mental check, okay. no? Mental check, Tonichi, is that also a practice, right? You were saying there's kind of virtual counseling that uh, the industry is doing. Is that right? Yes. No, actually, in one of our sessions um, with our H, the, H, the CCAP HR Council, um, you know, um, some of the HR practitioners were um, recommending um, e virtual counseling, which, you know, makes total sense. Actually, that was new to me. Um, so, I mean, new to me in the sense that, wow, everyone got up to speed with it real quickly. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, what, I've, I've, what I'm hearing is Tonichi talks a lot about you know, transformation and transitioning things, culture, process. Whereas our first speaker, uh, you know, dealt more on the importance of having technology. Fabi, what's up next with uh, what's up with our with our next speaker? Okay, so I'm um, sorry, there are some questions, but we will get back to your other questions in the interest of time. Um, our next speaker is the Chief HR Officer of uh, Home Credit Philippines. Let's welcome Alpha Aquino. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we yep. can hear you. Hello. So, hi, I'm Alpha HR. Very new to HR, actually. This is Gilbert's fault. So, this is the best time to be in HR, right? Um, I'm basically in operations working together with uh, Nikki and Tunichi and I know Gilbert has been trying so hard to put us three all together in same platform but uh, surprisingly it happened finally although virtually 
So I guess for, for our company, it's kind of different and pretty tough in, in the way that the Home Credit is a consumer finance company. We have about 13,000 employees spread across the Philippines. Um, if you see people who's wearing red and, and black uh, in the shopping malls, so those are our employees. So now with this COVID, um, obviously the malls are closed and uh, most of them are at home. We were lucky to have some of them work in our offices. So we have set up the work from home culture as well, um, even as we speak. Um, most of them, uh, or us rather, well, almost 100% are, are working from home. So when we talk about, I guess, in engagement of the employees, what comes to, to my mind, I, I had a different conversation last time for a different sets of audience, and it's predominantly what Tonichi had uh, mentioned, already keeping them engaged, keeping them um, there, basically. So what we had uh, previously established is that there's this thing called work from home buddies, wherein you're not uh, at all relating to the same department, but it's one, um, both together's uh, responsibility to keep in touch and basically just to say hi. And as you go through that one-on-one um, -on -one kind of buddy system, uh, you, you tend to learn some skills as well because we find it difficult. Um, maybe initially they were still excited to learn something new, some skills. But as we went along, um, we're on the 30th day, I, I felt that uh, people are getting to be more bored and tired. So unless there's somebody that would encourage them to, to work um, with them or just at least to have that conversation and get some skills onwards, then it will be good um, for, for them as well uh, to learn a few things. I guess what I will be sharing for today is really more of how do you now uh, make this um, some sort of your mindset because it's kind of difficult to keep on saying uh, be, have a positive mind, have a positive mind. And then um, at the end of the day, we're social people. So basically now it's a virtual mindset. So uh, there, I came across this um, article that talks about, uh, let me share my screen, that talks about more on how uh, basically you are, uh, some tips on the virtual mindset. And if you can see my screen, are you able to see my screen? I hope you yep. can. Yes. Okay, like you'd, okay, yeah. perfect. So I came across this um, article wherein there's some tips for remote working, and I guess it's all applicable to us nowadays. It covers four um, types of categories, you as an individual, you as a team, as a leader, and as well as for everybody. So some, some I know that most of you, if not, hopefully uh, all of you are doing it, uh, but just sharing it with you, like uh, you as an individual, obviously uh, you have to be Make sure that you are visible, well, virtually, uh, because you're not co-located. Be curious enough to learn some um, tools. And th this is what I said. This is the benefit of having some work from home buddies. Like if, if you see the, the things maybe um, on the background, my background. So I, I love music. So some, sometimes I just get my friends to come and pick up their guitars or their ukulele. Then we start learning something. And then we go to the uh, more serious stuff, serious stuff. And then obviously be accountable because like what I said, it's, it's easy to say that you're working from home and then people trust you. So I see a lot of articles saying that don't destroy that trust. Uh, let your managers feel and think that you are really working and making yourself productive. And then obviously that chit chat is very critical. As team naman, um, so we are using MS Teams to collaborate, to basically talk to each other. Um, that's part of our platform in, in Home Credit. And then um, in the beginning of those virtual meetings, basically what I ask them is pardon, um, it's like an update of, of hey, uh, what's happening in Cavite? What's happening in Makati? What's happening in your areas? So that we would know more or less for like five minutes just to be engaging them so that everybody is inclusively participating more or less. And then obviously one way or the other, I tell my team as HR, like, you know, uh, whatever, um, however busy you are, it's that easy to have a chat or just put or type like good morning, good afternoon, just at least 10 or 20 people if you can. Just check in and then see if they respond. Well, good if they do, um, then you start the conversation from there. And obviously, back again to being accountable, obviously being responsible as a team as well because everybody now has to step up, I guess, um, and be thinking of um, what to do next uh, when this is over. And then obviously the, the develop and respect the virtual norms. As leadership, which is very tough nowadays because you, you're taking care of people that you don't see, you're taking care of uh, teams that may or may not be able to um, answer you straight away. And then you're wondering, uh, am I, are they following uh, me? Um, what are they doing now? So 
I hope that we are all in that mindset of, you know, we have to trust our, our team um, to continue on doing what they're supposed to do. And productivity is uh, overrated. So it's so difficult to demand productivity to some people, so especially if you don't know that person if, or if you're not checking on them. So that's why the, uh, I guess, the importance of making sure that you're there for them will be good. And then obviously some feedback as well. So it's not an excuse that it's virtual. I don't see you. I don't give feedback. Then you don't fail me. It's not an excuse. This is going to be our way of working more or less for quite some time. And then lastly, so all parties, obviously, to make sure that the, the time is um, disciplined in such a way that you have your start and you have your finish, um, it has to have an agenda. We have to be all relevant as, as to what we are doing. And obviously, this uh, encourage participation and connect mindfully. As what Nikki mentioned, um, mindfully is something else. It's kind of difficult to, to do meditation and all, but it's, it really helps and it really works, especially at this time. And then lastly, I guess on, on my slide is um, just some few words or last words. It's, it's not supposed to be us questioning that how are we going to get through this. It's supposed to be how are we going to change through this. And then at the end of this, uh, every all, all of these trials that we are encountering, I do hope that uh, we get out better people and better professionals um, at the end of the day. That's all for me. Okay, thank you, Alpha. Uh, again, uh short but again it, it there's so much you know again i pick up you talked about transparency and trust around this time especially that people are you know uh, virtually connected so how do we you know move to make sure that the work relations is there uh team play you know how people work together that's very important and then lastly the productivity so work from home doesn't just push parang says abini alpha it's not just pushing everyone to be productive but it's a balance of having that relationship despite them you know at home kasi ang hirap eh you know when you're at home parang there's so much you know uh, distractions that can happen well unlike in the work uh, workplace of alpha very nice uh, there were people commenting on your nice guitars background so you know, you, yeah. you talk a lot I have about, my merienda as well. Do you know that this uh, cream has popcorn? That's right. Wow. Wonderful. <laughs> and kanina rin, people are saying uh, one way to, to do engagement is to even share what people are cooking. People are taking the, the, the cooking challenge on, you know, really preparing some bayan and menu. Very interesting uh, sharing here. So, uh, Alpha, your point, no? Parang let's not have the situation change us, but let's change along with this COVID. Parang seems like people are waiting what's next and how do we change things. What you're saying, what you're driving is be proactive and move it forward, right? Okay, so very interesting. Um, I'll, uh, I'll pause for now and uh, okay. There's one question I'd like to pick up and this is probably for you, Alpha. What do you guys follow? Productivity or uh, hours versus hours rendered. So I, I think it's time to ask, uh, how do you measure productivity? Is it uh, based on the hours rendered or is it the output? I think it's more on the output. At the end of the day, we, we uh, it's it, in office is easy because you see them nine to five or nine to six. But however, at home, we also try to understand that, you know, you have families, you have children, you, you have a lot of things to do. And not to mention, you can only go out in certain days. Uh, because you can do your grocery only on certain times. So that's also, and unfortunately, that falls within the office hours. So it's really output-based, and it's more of really trusting that person is going to do the right thing. And then we try to establish that relationship. Where, and if you do have questions and you come and ask uh, me, if it's not clear to you, then let's do have that conversation as well. So that you don't mess around and you don't uh, do things like again and again. So it's just a waste of time. Okay, thank you, Alpha, and uh, we'll uh, bring you back again later. Now, to move forward, uh, we'd like to introduce, I'd like to introduce the, of course, our last but not the least speaker, uh, the Chief Operating Officer of Salarium, Mr. Brent Denning. Brent, over to you. Yeah, hi, everyone. Thanks, Gilbert. I'll just share my screen. Okay, so um, yeah, in, interesting listening along to you know to everyone. There's some really really helpful tips, and I, and I think all of us can relate to 
um, you know, you know, to some of the practices. And you know, at Solarium, we're a we're a payroll company and a financial services company, and we 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 have a responsibility to continue our operations. And you know, in this time, because if we didn't, you know, there'd be tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of you know people that don't get their pay or can't process their pay. So. What I want to do is I want to talk just a little bit about technology as a, as a tech company um, and you know how that can help uh, working from remote and there's been many many touches on that um, and then I'll share just some insights of what we've been doing at Solarium uh, across our teams as we've maintained our operations um, pretty much a hundred percent. Now um, the question really is you know was anyone really set up for remote working um, and you know I think the answer is varied. Uh, I think many companies may have felt that they were but the severity of you know the the, the recent situation, um, you, you know, was obviously very significant. And 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 then, as per the theme of the other speakers, um, you know, it's a, it's a short term situation, but it, it, there is going to be a medium term and a long term implication, you know, for remote working uh, as we move forward. And and I think that's clear, not just here in the Philippines, but right across the world. And so. You know how how are you going to prepare for that as a company? And, and there are many ways and many tips already discussed. But cloud computing is is definitively you know the um, one of the main enablers of remote working or a fundamental um, enabler for remote working. And you know the, the question is what what access to cloud computing services do you have in your company, and what decisions would you make going forward? And there are innumerable benefits to to cloud computing, and I'm, I won't go through all of those, but you know the, the big ones on the screen there. You know, access and visibility to data and, and, and visibility of your business is a big one. But um, you know, there's a survey conducted last year actually. You know, what were the main reasons for um, you know companies switching to cloud technologies? And you know, two out of the four disaster recovery uh, capabilities and enabling better business flexibility. You know, uh, were very significant reasons, and um, and that's something that. Um, we should consider going forward when we're setting up for the, the new normal. Now, you know, selection of technology, I mean, there is no shortage of technology. It's been mentioned all the way through and there are many brands already mentioned and I've got you know, several of them on the screen here, but I like to categorize it and think, well, what do you want to achieve? And then select your technology to drive that. And I, you know, I've got three pillars here. Um, your core operating systems of your company, where do you want visibility? Um, you know, is it your CRM? Is it your customers? Is it your employees through your payroll or your HRIS systems? Is it, you know, through the way that you pay people and your, your payments um, or even recruitment or bigger systems accounting and ERP? Um, and there's, there's plenty of, of options and solutions for that, but that gives you transparency and it, it tells you what's going on, you know, with that particular operation of your group that you can make great business decisions. The next two are communications and collaboration, and I've got them separately, um, uh, separated deliberately because I think there's a big difference between the two. So um, we've already mentioned, and we are using communication platforms right now. So there's, there's no shortage of video-based um, platforms, Zoom, Google Hangout, Microsoft Teams, WebEx, Web, WebEx is just, just a few. Um, and they're really powerful because they have um, the ability for us to talk face to face, um, uh, you know, share our screens, et cetera, and work through. Then there's, there's you know, um, messaging services, WhatsApp, Messenger, Viber, Telegram, Mattermost, and WeChat. And, and they're also very powerful too as well because they, they, they allow you to create groups uh, and they allow you to have like team chats uh, or even, you know, uh, broader chats right across your company, but also team chats. Some of them are more powerful than others. Um, we use Mattermost at Solarium um, and it enables you to create project teams. It enables you to share documents, um, you know, share links, et cetera. And it's extremely powerful and it's used socially, but it's also used you know, around um, um, teams, et cetera. Uh, and then the, the last category is collaboration and sharing work. And, and the advent of you know, Dropbox and, and having you know, cloud-based uh, files has been around for a very long time. But, you know, most recently over the last few years, um, utilization of sharing documents, and I, and I don't mean like a, an Excel document that you, you know, you email each other and update and create different versions. I mean one document that you use on a central drive that six, peoples can, six people can be working on at the same time. And that's really powerful because it creates collaboration. It's not just one person working on one thing and sending it off for the other and waiting, waiting for them to, you know, to finish that work. And you really can use that as a strategy um, around teams and working teams um, for collaborating. And in times like this, it's even more powerful. So, you know, the message really is, you know, think about what you want to achieve in your organization um, around collaboration, around communication and, and around visibility to your business. 
um, and then select systems that support that. And there's absolutely no shortage of um, systems. And, and the beauty of cloud-based technology is you don't have to invest a lot upfront. It's very often a subscription. Um, so it's, it's not like you're making a massive decision. And if that technology doesn't work for you, then you can move on to the, to the next platform. Now, the real question is, and we were asking earlier, are you continuing business operations and are you doing it on skeleton staff? Well, if you, if you sent your team remotely, would it be more productive or could you maintain the productivity that you have in the office? Um, and the answer is actually yes. And, and th there's some case studies of even improving productivity. And I've got that um, on the slide now. This is a, this is a call center in China, a, a travel company, a 16,000 employee call center where they're selling airfares and hotel rooms, et cetera. And they, they went through a, a formal study. This was published in the um, Journal of Economics uh, by Stanford University. And they, they pulled 300 people aside and, and voluntarily, everyone volunteered, and they put them work from home for, for nine months. They set them up, they had to meet certain criteria, they had to have good internet, they had to have um, a, a private space or relatively private space to work. They obviously gave them access to their technology of their, uh, of their systems and of course telephony. Um, and they gave them very you know, clear shifts, breaks uh, and times that they're working and, and key metrics which they had in the office in any case. And at the end of nine months, they had a 13% productivity improvement in both sales and activity. And then it was so powerful for the organization that they actually uh, rolled it out to the entire organization. And there was a comment earlier about, you know, work from home is not for everyone. So they made it voluntary. So they said to everyone in the company that was on, on call center, um, you have the choice and the option to work from home if you can meet these criteria. And they had a 50% adoption rate, um, which meaning that 50% didn't think it was for them. Um, and then when they did that, you can see the results on the screen, they actually improved that 13% up into 22, 23%. And of course, they took 50% of that people out of their office, there were financial savings and benefits, et cetera. So this is an example of an organization that really embraced work from home and actually turned it into a positive thing because their um, uh, attrition rate after they pulled it to the full company dropped by 50%. And that connects to the second bullet point I've got there is, you know, a local study here in the Philippines says, you know, not surprisingly that nine out of 10 Filipinos would prefer, um, you know, to, you know, to work in a, a place, that ha an organization that has flexible workplace. Um, and, you know, that, that seems like an obvious statistic, but the, you know, the Chinese company actually proved it um, and people wanted to work for that organization. But is it all positive? And, you know, there's some other studies that look at, well, what's the, what's the, um, what, what would you worry about in remote working? And both employees and employers have worries. And they've all, all of these things have been mentioned on this call from employees' point of view, collaboration, communication, loneliness, you know, not being able to unplug. And from the employer's perspective, um, can I measure productivity? Uh, can people collaborate, communicate? Are people working? You know, can I see that they're working? Do I have the right hardware? I mean, um, that's not the first time I've heard of people walking out of offices with, um, you know, PC towers under their arms, um, you know, as people have been caught, um, you know, by the, by the lockdown. And then, of course, internet and internet, you know, uh, internet has come a long way, um, but, it, you know, it, 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 in particularly uh, in homes, et cetera, um, you know, it can be, can be a real problem. And so your companies have got to be ready for that. So summing it, summing it up and rounding it out in terms of the, the technology aspect, um, you know, it, it embrace cloud if you want that flexibility, um, but make sure it makes your business more efficient and it makes it more visible. Um, think about how you want your teams to communicate and how you want to encourage collaboration and then select in the technologies that really leverage that. Um, and, you know, part of being work from home, I think the biggest fear is transparency. You know, are my people working? Um, and from a tech perspective, there are plenty of tools and things that people can clock in, check in, um, and you can know as an employee that they're working. Um, on the human side, um, you know, and this connects to that transparency, you know, be clear with your team that the, the sea travel in China, part of what made that so successful is, is everyone clearly understood what, what their job was and how they were going to be measured. They had very strict shifts, um, as they did in the office, including breaks, etc., which allowed people to, you know, check out, so to speak. Um, and, you, you know, um, encourage, encourage collaboration, team time, face time. In, encourage um, you know, catch-ups that people can see each other and, uh, and you know, share their faces, etc., on the screen. 
Um, but, you know, my final slide, you know, we're a payroll um, service provider as well as a payout company and um, it's a cloud-based technology that, that we deliver. And so um, people can use our system anywhere that they've got access um, to the internet. But, you know, when, when the Enhanced Community Quarantine team came for us, I mean, we, we basically, everyone was in the office one day and the very next day, Solarium is still functioning when everyone's at home. And that, went, that happened right across the company. And, you know, we're a young company. We're a startup company, five years young. So most of our platforms are built around cloud. And, and that has enabled us to have this kind of business continuity. I mean, we've got uh, technical engineers and developers. We've got customer service teams. We have sales teams. Uh, we have implementation success teams. And we have financial technology and treasury teams. And all of those teams are now operating remotely and, and they were able to do so because we, we, you know, we had so many, you know, most of our businesses set up um, on, on cloud technology. And in terms of some of the things that we've been doing, our teams actually, depending on the leadership of the teams, there's been different approaches. So some teams have just maintained all of the, um, you know, stand up meetings and regular meetings that they would have when they're in the office. Other teams um, uh, uh, will have um, check-ins during the week. Uh, so I have some of my teams where we, you know, cameras are on and we have a check-in, just a half an hour check-in a couple of times a week and people just have the chance to talk about what they're working on and, you know, catch up with things. Of course, we have our scheduled meetings and things. And then the, the tip about um, checking in on, um, on some kind of messaging thing, we also practice that um, across most of the teams uh, in the company. And that, that's also nice just to wake up in the morning and, or, you know, start your day with a cup of coffee and, and say good morning to the rest of the team and they're all saying, saying good morning back. So. It is mixed. We also, uh, our HR team uh, also enabled um, healthcare, access to healthcare should anyone need it. Um, and of course, we've had our you know, full company town halls and, and catch ups and things. So, um, you know, it's, it's been a roller coaster for everyone, but we're very proud because we've not uh, uh, you know, dropped the ball in terms of the company's operations and we're able to do so because of the, not only the culture of the company, but the technology we had behind it. Um, they're my contact details if anyone wants to reach out or happy to ask, uh, answer any questions. Thanks, Gilbert. Yeah, thank you so much, Red, for that wonderful presentation. And I really love Solarium. Uh, and I had noticed that you put in a lot of things in that uh, system where even people can have a loan um, loan application. And I know for a fact that you've been giving this to employees. So how has been the trend nowadays with Solarium? Uh, what's the trends that's happening in your system? People who have availed of it. Yeah, you mean in recent times? Yeah, this yeah, recent times, yeah. Yeah, and, I mean, companies, uh, it's a mixed, okay? So companies that, um, you know, say, for example, in retail, they've had to shut down. So, if, you know, of course, they've stopped their payroll services for no work, no pay workers and things. And then we've got other companies that have been able to function and operate and are really trying to leverage um, some of the tools that we've got, um, um, you know, because we have timekeeping, we have transparent timekeeping so you can clock in and clock out um, remotely. Our whole system, payroll service, um, operates remotely, including the payout solution. Um, uh, so, so there, are, you know, there's been a lot of inquiry around that, particularly the transparency side. Um, but it's a mix because some businesses have just been forced to shut down. Mm, okay. That's great. Thank you so much, Brent. And I'd like to call on the rest of the speakers so that we could have a Q&A session from the rest of, uh, from people who would like to still ask questions. I've seen your questions, guys. So this is an opportunity to ask any questions. So let's call on Nikki, uh, Tonichi, and Alpha to join us. Um, and then let's also try to look into your chat. What kind of questions do you have for us here, for all the speakers? So I'll go ahead and um, question one of you guys, uh, I mean, you guys can take this question. Wait, hold on, because there's just too much chat. Um, um, some yeah. of the, you know, there were requests of whether there'd be presentation materials or materials from the speakers. Uh, we will do best to share materials with you. Please uh, answer the uh, survey we shared with you via email and uh, we'll uh, share some materials to all participants now. Yes, Fabi, you have a question now? Yeah, okay. So anyone can take this question from any of the speakers. Um, for the presenters, with the many changes you've had to cope with the work from home constraint, constraints, what are some recent changes you would consider having to continue post-COVID? Um, anyone? 
Yeah. So for for me, I think um, you know there are some companies who have moved into over the rec- over the past years. There are some companies, or at least within the BPO space, who have um, moved into purchasing only laptops or Chromebooks or you know yeah. um, devices that can easily be brought home, but are not being brought home um, before COVID, right? So I think that's definitely in terms of technology and um, equipment, that's definitely one of the things that uh, maybe our industries or businesses should look into. So um, not too much on the desks, desktops anymore and invest a little bit more on the laptops or you know, mobile devices. Yeah. Any answers from the rest? I, I totally agree. I mean, Nowadays, because my company has invested also in desktops, we've been bringing home the desktops to the employees and it's pretty challenging. So the lesson right nowadays is really to invest on, you know, um, laptops because it's easier, it's handy to bring and anything that could happen right now, especially what's currently going on, we could easily take home that kind of laptops. Anyone else would like to uh, answer that? Brent, would you like to answer that too? Yeah, I mean, we're in the same boat too. I mean, we do have some towers, believe it or not, in the company, but most people are on laptops. So those towers walked out the door, like like was mentioned in other, in other uh, but as part of our regular business continuity, we also had a lot of Wi-Fi dongles, um, uh, just in case the internet you know, goes down, being an internet um, delivered company. And so they got dual purpose, repurposed to go to colleagues uh, and employees that didn't have great access to, you know, some people when they went home, they didn't have good access on their home access. So that was an example where we had business continuity, but it got repurposed because of the situation. Um, you know, and, and, you know, laptops are expensive. They are more expensive than towers. Um, uh, but, you know, some systems are, as long as you've got a, a screen, a phone or, or an iPad or something, some systems can. Um, such as email and that if, if you're using um, something like Gmail can be accessed from home. So it doesn't always have to be an inexpensive hardware, uh, but it is far more helpful. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. You know, Fabi, I have a question to the speaker, right? So this is uh, more from a perspective of while uh, our employees or the workforce are getting used to liking the idea of that work from home is actually possible, right? So now, um, I don't know, there's, of course, when this all started, Everyone was so anxious. Everyone was so anxious, like, what's going to happen? I won't see my colleague, my peers, and so on. But now that, you know, we've been accustomed to it, it's been almost uh, like a month, right? And moving, uh, you know, hopefully it, when we get back, it, it's going to be like um, like a value proposition, like, is it better? Or would companies now try to adapt to a work from home? Are we ready? Or are your organizations or companies ready? Um, is this not going to be like uh, one of the things that now from an employer brand perspective, uh, can people really adapt to uh, work from home? Your thoughts? You might end up, what I'm saying is that you might end up people leaving you because they are, there are companies who are already offering work from home. If this is already working in the new normal. I think yeah, I mean, yeah. oh sorry yeah sorry Brent go yeah. ahead no you go oh I, I was just gonna say that I think um like I mentioned earlier I think Brent mentioned it too that work from home is really I don't think it's for everyone um and not all like areas in the Philippines or in even in Manila are equipped um from a network standpoint to actually do net working from home. Um, one of the things, though, that I experienced, at least during the earlier days of lockdown, was that, you know, I saw the likes of PLDP and Globe getting to, and Nikki knows this, getting together um, to make sure that um, the residential areas are enabled to support this um, work, work from home structure. So um, while it will, it will be, I think the engaging part is, you know, the folks who desire or who think working from home is for them, they will be high, more highly engaged. And then the ones who need, have the need to be present in, the, in their workspaces or will have more a better appreciation of what they have in the office. I think that's one of the things that, you know, would, one of the better things that would, are, would come out of um, the situation. 
Yeah, just, just to, I mean, I was going to say exactly the same thing, so, so I'll say, say something different, but you also, we, just because the company may be prepared to do it doesn't mean that the employee is, um, has the, um, the situation to do it. Um, maybe they don't have a private space or you know, private area to work, and I think we've all had teleconferences with pots and pans clanging in the background or children uh, you, you know, um, playing in the background. So it's not just the employer's choice. Um, and, and of course there are plenty of roles that you can't, like our sales teams, you know, they can't work from home. They're, they're supposed to be, you know, face to face customer engaging and, and we've been using this time with them to, to train, but you can't do that forever. You know, so there are some roles that are, um, you know, just not possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Fabi. Questions from the, from the group or from the audience? Yeah. I think there's another question about how do you practice social responsibility with this kind of situation that we have. I think there's a lot of opportunities right now for that, right? But uh, anyone who'd like to uh, take that answer, I take that the question, Alpha or uh, Nikki? So the question is, uh, how would you be able to practice social responsibility given our uh, situation at the moment? I think because it, the, the question indicating that primarily because we cannot do physical face-to-face yes. uh, -face interaction. It's like for home credit, um, our main social responsibility and what we're very proud of is financial literacy. Uh, we just don't invite people to take loans from us. We also teach them um, eventually how to manage their money so that eventually they can, play, uh, they can pay. What we're seeing is um, now the, the difficult part is how do you reach to these customers because our customers are predominantly on the on the uh, levels of the below average to average type of customers. So that's some sort of a challenge. But um, fortunately, we have some mobile apps to, to provide um, our customers with that. So they are interactive with us. We have voice bots and chat bots as well to go inside with them. So we can still teach, we can still share financial literacy, which is our main CSR. Um, so it's just a matter of putting it face to face, from face to face to more innovative ways by, by doing some uh, virtual engagements with, with our customers. Okay, okay. great. That's wonderful. Uh, uh, Abby, let's entertain three more questions. And this one, there seems to be like a pressure now on the role of HR, especially the HR leader. The question of joy to the, to the speakers or to the panelists is that um, what would be now the expectations to HR leaders in this situation? or may I ask speakers on their expectation on the HR leads in this situation. What are important traits that an HR should have around this time? Brent, from a COO perspective, Alpha, uh, you know, from a CHRO and uh, Nikki and uh, Tonichi. Yes. Okay, I'll go first. I mean, I mean, from the organization, I think, you know, people are definitely looking for leadership. Um, yeah, from their HR and there were some comments earlier, you know, every, all, all eyes are on, on HR. And I think everybody un understands the situation, but the, what they're really looking for is just some leadership uh, and some direction. And um, even if, if some of those directions are tough decisions, um, but, but people are looking for that. Okay, thank you, Brent. You may want, um, unless the other speakers would like to share, Tonichi, what's your expectation now to an HR leader? You know, is this only in HR work or could even be business leaders, right? But of course, the pressure to keep employees, that's a main responsibility of HR. So I guess that's the, where the question is coming from uh, by Joey from the audience. Yeah, I think from like what Brent mentioned, um, it's really all about leadership and communication. And in, when we say communication, that means proactive communication. So... Um, we as, as HR leaders or just as the leaders, um, we cannot just communicate what we watch or see. We need to make sure that we are very well informed and right on top of things, right? Because um, our employees are looking to us to provide them with, you know, the explanations. One of the things that um, I'm, I think if Nikki is still on, um, they, Nikki did a really amazing job during the earlier days of um, the lockdown when he was actually keeping the entire industry informed on what was coming from the government and making sure that we had um, a channel um, to, 
clarify what was what it meant what it meant for the employees what it meant for the employers and at the same time we had the entire hr team in at least for the for our members who were actively engaged and participating during that period um ahead of the information that was coming from the government mm -hmm. yeah and you know what um i mean to be fair i'm an hr practitioner too rolled out you know uh, evolved but uh I think kudos as well. I think HR around this time are just like any of our frontliners. People probably just didn't see them, but uh, I guess they deserve a tap of their backs and uh, good recognition. They've done a pretty good job, right? I mean, you know, it's the toughest job. You have more than 100 people. You have thousands of people looking at, at you and say, how are we? What's next? Uh, waiting for any direction. I think it, it's a pretty tough job. If you're in there, and Alpha was sharing a while ago, Fabi, that I was uh, responsible for her journey to getting to HR. It's not an easy job to get in HR. But if you're in HR, kudos to you. We're, you know, frontliner in the corporate world and continue doing best practices. I'm sure Brent will agree. And Tunichi and uh, Nikki, who are business leaders. Yeah, I agree. It is a tough job <laughs> for HR. Yes. And, 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 you know, I, I said that you're looking for leadership from HR, but there's a responsibility across the whole leadership team. Uh, you can't just look at HR. I mean, people want the direction from HR, but the rest of the leadership team needs to play their role in executing it. And I think it's very easy for everyone just to focus on HR in times like this. So that's the responsibility of the rest of the leadership team. Mm -hmm. Tabi, you want to ask your last question and then we wrap up the whole uh, session. I know that, you know, it's 423 and I guess everyone's so engaged. Uh, we have a lot of questions still coming up. But uh, Yeah, one more la last question. Yes. Can you regress, can you share regress tips for employers and employees alike upon coming back from working from home? Since some companies cannot fully go 100% with a work from home setup. Regress tips for employers and employees alike upon coming back from working from home since some companies cannot go fully 100% coming back from home. You have other... Um, if I go by, say, for, for home credit, so um, HR analytics is very important nowadays. So fortunately for us, we have the demogra uh, demographics of where our people live. And as you know, this ECQ might be for whole NCR, might be for some areas only, like now Cebu had declared that May 15, uh, Davao has declared that they will do some uh, modified quarantine, and then you have people spread uh, across that. So uh, for us, we have this recovery plan, so to speak, as to what areas are going to be activated and how are we going to move some of our employees there, if at all. Um, we also identified that some of the positions or processes that can still be effectively done at home, then we will not um, have them in the offices yet. Um, I can tell you now that for most of our buildings or offices, it might just be 50%, um, maximum of 70% occupied because of the social distancing as well. Um, so those plans, currently we are already talking about it uh, with or without the extension so that when that time comes that we need to start deploying or start communicating to the people, then we're more or less not perfect, but at least ready in that sense. So location uh, process uh, would be something that we will be looking at before deployment. Thank you. Thank you, Alpha, for sharing that. Okay, I guess we're already done. Um, we're done with the questions and we'd like to thank our panelists our speakers for this afternoon for sharing their time and their knowledge with regard to what we're currently going on, what we're going through right now, working from home and all those tips. It's really informative. I've learned a lot so much today. And I'm sure we have all positive feedbacks coming through our chat saying that they learned a lot and thanking all our speakers for this afternoon session. Gilbert, would you like to say something before we end? Okay, so again, I uh, would like to thank, of course, uh, Nikki Agkawili, uh, Tunichi Achura, Alpha Aquino, and Brent Denning for sharing your time and, uh, you know, inspiring everybody to consider that work from home is going to be the new normal through an enhanced uh, employee engagement. And we wish, you know, everybody that, you know, that you, you would have picked up 
a lot of things, best practices, because I learn a lot also, Fabi. But again, why don't we thank also people that have worked and supported us, XOXO Day, for making it possible to for using this platform. Uh, we also have Omwelt AI for the survey that's uh, that has been circulated. Uh, Salarium who has uh, made it also possible and uh, to, to support this program. We have uh, the support from the associations like the ITBP, uh, IT, uh, the IBPAP or and CCAP as well as the PMAP. Fabi, thank you so much as well for uh, joining me in moderating. You know to to to, to handle the four big names: uh, Brent, <laughs> Nietzsche, Alpha, and Nikki. It's also tough, no? It's like uh, managing a COVID nineteen too. But yeah, we were able to make it through. Very good, uh, very good discussions. I think uh, we look forward to having more sessions uh, with everyone. I, you know, from here, we'll have to say uh, thank you, everybody, for making it today in this afternoon's uh, forum, Fabi. Uh, yeah, we'd, we'd like to add that the prices, because people are interested to know how they get their prices. So we will be getting your, we will be ra sort of doing a raffle random, and we will be sending you an email. So, um, if you, if you, yes. if you're one of the lucky uh, attendees here, you'll get an email from, um, from Travel Recommends that you're winning one of the freebies. But uh, Travel Recommends is actually giving 15% to some of their products and services. So, uh, stay tuned, guys. Okay. Thank you, everyone, and stay safe. Thank you, everyone, and stay safe. Thanks, everybody. Bye.